in remodeling, a lot of times people don't realize that you're affecting the strength. You cut out certain walls that had braces in them, you need to add bracing back in. So that's why we have one here and in here. Looking good. Hey Justin. Hey, How's it going? Good. good. Working on the closet, wiring. Yeah, yeah getting some lights in. Good. Any shut? Any uh, plugs on the level? Yeah, just the existing ones. That just are, the existing. Okay. And then we'll be adding some out here on the outside of the closet door. Heavy yeah. duty blocking for some rods <laughs> yeah, and sure so forth. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got the ceiling here framed in. We're at the Mulholland residence. And the new tiered ceiling is back in place. You can see we used the existing beams to cantilever off of. That's why only one 2x12 is needed up here, Justin. See that one right there? We don't need two like we did these big beams over here. These were micro lamps, and we don't need that anymore because we're carrying off of that, and we've got a supporting wall that carries that weight now. And they were carrying a lot more weight. They went from wall to wall, and we're only going in between beams that are very, very strong. So that, that was a conservative way to do it, and it's very looks very good. Now we'll have that same feeling we had before. All proportions will be the same. So we've got all these walls opened up. We just interrupted the demolition a little bit. And we've got the lighting being wired. All of the plugs are being wired. The manifold system here is going to be moved over. All of this is going to be moved over here. The plumbers are on their way over. So this is really going to be a grand closet area, master closet area, with a nice bench right there in the middle to sit down and change your clothes. Toilet's being relocated here, and if you'll spin around there, Justin, we can see you can see the trench came all the way over for the toilet. That's how far we had to do. Now this is why it cost to move toilets. Look at this concrete and how thick it was, and all the steel in it. But it also shows how we keep all the steel in place here. Down in there, there's thick steel for beams. There's thick steel for beam right here. Look at this. This was a beam, a concrete beam coming through the edge of the, through deep, deep into the, to the ground. And we chipped it out, we'll, we'll pour it all back. But that beam steel was not cut. That's the way we do our demolition. You can see how they only cut down so deep. And then they let the rest be chipped out. That way we do not cut the steel, we do not affect the integrity of the foundation. And when we pour back, it all bonds back together. And you leave it rough like this so that the concrete can bond to jagged edges. We've got a zero clearance threshold, just a roll-in shower here. This is all going to be chipped out. This is where the old shower used to be, and it's all going to be relocated. That's why we had to come from here from this real small corner shower to here, a much larger shower. And then this will be chipped out so that we can start right there at that entrance and roll right in if we had to or walk in a lot easier. And we're going to go ahead and widen that just a little bit. This is some of the old plumbing that's all going to be relocated. And we get new shower valves and all that with it. This is a metal wind bracing system right here. It uses a lot less a lot less space, a little easier to install. It has a T on the back of it. It has a little rib on the back of it here. And this is cut in, it's called a lead-in brace. The sheetrock goes right over it. And so we put these braces in wherever we feel like we want a little added strength. When you're doing demolition in remodeling, a lot of times people don't realize that you're affecting the strength. You cut out certain walls that had braces in them you need to add bracing back in. So that's why we have one here and in here. It adds strength back into these walls. Just a little effect, and it's a little bit overkill, but we'd rather do that than, than see some movement after it's sheetrocked. Or be called out on an inspection. Now this, this particular location won't be inspected because it's not in the, the county, the city of New Braunfels. 
but we're still gonna follow and exceed all building codes. Now you don't have to have this, this two by four and that two by four, but it keeps it together really nicely. It keeps the beam from separating or warping because you nail through, as you can see regularly, you keep these in line. So this will never warp out or cup open and then, then crack your sheetrock or look crooked. This is our technique that we, that we use to make sure that these stay really nice and neat. And so everything is flush. It makes for a really good finish out for sheetrock. All right, well, we're getting ready to put the plumbers in, let Justin finish his work, and then we will be sheetrocking. So the next visit we have, we'll be showing the sheetrock on, and it's gonna look bigger whenever you see sheetrock on it, believe it or not.